Hello and welcome to Concept Arcs, a show where we discuss ideas for sequels, remakes, and original ideas for games, movies, and all kinds of entertainments. I'm joined here with my guest or co-host, uh, Ryan and Aura. Hello there. Hi, how are you guys doing? And I am Saber. So, today we'll be talking about Zelda and uh, some ideas for it. So, uh, we'll go ahead and start with Zelda games. What have you guys uh, played? I've played pretty much all of the 3D ones. Uh, sadly, I have not played that much of the 2D ones because I just didn't have access to them. Fair enough. And uh, I've played the majority of them, uh, with the exception of the DS ones. I haven't played any of those, uh, which I think is pretty much just uh, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. But there might be another one I'm not thinking of. Uh, Link Between Worlds. Oh, yeah. So, and Aura Shen. And then you've I've played. played, I've played, if not, if not beaten, most of the games. Um, starting with the original, even the, uh, even the less liked Zelda 2. Zelda Link's Adventure. Yeah. I played that one. I don't think it was as bad as it gets a rap for, but it is a lot different than the other ones. The first showing of Shadow Link. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Um, personally, my favorite one is Majora's Mask. Followed pretty close by Ocarina of Time, and yeah, there's a bit of nostalgia there. But I don't think they're... I, I mean, I think they've aged well, too, because, I mean, we played through them not too long ago. And they were still both pretty fun. I mean, Breath uh, not Breath of Ocarina of Time uh, still holds up, because I went through that for the first time a few years ago, and it was still pretty good. Yeah, um, it's it's got a pretty solid overall world map and whatnot. Uh, traveling around, little things to explore, stuff to do. How getting items lets you get through more stuff in the environment. Uh, a lot of the 3D Zeldas have a really good sense of adventure and discovery as you run throughout the world. I would kind of say that's like a key trope of a Zelda game is exploration and finding neat and interesting things to do. And I agree. Uh, exploration and opening up uh, otherwise closed borders as you progress. Yeah, like uh, in... Twilight like Princess, getting the hook, you get like the hook shot, and then you get the double hook shot, and all of a sudden, a bunch of stuff opens up. And then there's the weird top thing that you can ride on, which has all the random areas you can go to with that, even though... Like all four of them? Yeah, even though there's not really that many just kind of laying around, but there's a couple. Yeah, but it's used in the dungeon was cool. It was an interesting fight. boss fight, yeah, fighting the giant yeah, skeleton awesome. thing. Probably. Don't remember that one's name. Star Lord. Star Lord. Yeah. Think so. I believe well, so. Somebody will correct us if we're wrong. Yeah, I think, I think Twilight Princess is a pretty good one. Uh, I wouldn't put it in my top favorites, but I do. I did like it overall. I've liked the majority of them I play. I don't think I've ever played one. I'm like, this is terrible, except for the, the CDI one, I guess. If that counts. I mean, it is That's technically a Zelda game, but. Is it though? I don't know. Well, I mean, one seemed to. Technically, I think map. it's. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure at how they view that. I don't think they counted as one, but it was technically made to be one. Even though I think there Bad. were actually three. I only played one on the CDI. The weird one where you're like two kids. Oh, I played the Link one just a tiny bit. I've played so, none of them. <laughs> Well, the, the CDI ones, they're not very popular overall. They have a the... lot of problems. I've seen the memes. I to die. haven't actually seen a lot of memes for the CDI ones, honestly. I, I assume there's some funny ones out there. There's funny stuff out there for all kinds of stuff. That was a terrible sentence. Um, but, yeah, so anyway, we can probably talk about... Uh, what were your favorite games, uh, Aura? Well, I'm going to start off with my my favorite, and yes, um, 
a large part of why it's my favorite is for nostalgia purposes. Of course, I'm talking about Ocarina of Time. Um, That's fair. For its, for its time, it had very intuitive 3D fighting mechanics. Um, no other game was really able to accomplish uh, a feat like that at the time. But yeah, overall, I think the combat worked really well in it. Dashing uh, the track, around inside something. I remember hearing about the uh, the tracking. Well, for the longest time, they were having a hard time tracking, uh, being able to track uh, your your opponent in those three D three D games at the time. And, uh, yeah, the lock on mechanic. The tar- or, uh, Ocarina of Time with the Z target was very intuitive at, for the time. I wonder if it was one of the first games to introduce something like a lock on mechanic like that. It might have been. I have heard it was. Um, if anybody has any discussion about it, uh, please feel free to link it to, or to uh, speak up in the comments. Yeah, I don't honestly know off the top of my head, but I, I know they did some things with it. Like, they used the R-Wings flight patterns to kind of uh, build Vivagi around for his body movement. Mm-hmm. Um, his head was basically the plane. Yeah. Which is an, a neat idea, creative if nothing else. It's a good way to reuse uh, assets from other games. Yeah, it's just basically stealing how mechanics work, basically, I think. It also had one of my favorite bosses in uh, about any just about any game I played before. Um, the Intelligent Ganondorf. Oh, when he... The, the good volleyball extreme match. Basically. <laughs> I don't know. I, I liked it, too. It was fun. I think so. Uh, before that, most of the other Zelda games... Uh, showed off either just a regular wizard or an insane, basically insane Ganon. This yeah, was actually Pigman that teleports yeah. everywhere for no reason. Hey, sometimes he had a trident, this or was it all the times? I don't. Uh, most remember. of the time. Uh, this this villain to me uh, basically moved the story along. Yeah, I mean, he was only in a couple of cutscenes, but, you know, at least he's a presence there you see throughout the game. Yeah, he's, he's very effective for what he needs to be. Mm-hmm. And you see him shit-talking the King of Hyrule, sort of. Then you see it, well, I it's mean, he, he, knee, he bows to him, and then Zelda's like, I don't trust him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the King of Hyrule's like, how can you not trust him? He's the demon uh, prince of thieves. And you're like, wait a second. We must uh, harbinge... You gotta be friends with these guys. My second, my second favorite game of the franchise is uh, a game that came out actually shortly after Ocarina of Time, built on the same uh, the same engine that they were going with. Uh, that would be Majora's Mask. Um, nearly sequ- or nearly perfect uh, for a sequel. It used a lot of the same characters and a lot of the same... Yeah, uh, and a lot of that was because they only had, like, a year development time on it Mm -hmm. or something crazy like that. So they just took assets over and rebuilt a new game around it. They were also able to introduce an even newer and more mysterious villain in the form of uh, Majora's Mask. Yeah. I think Majora was also a pretty good villain. I think Majora's Mask, it, it, that one's my favorite, so I, I have a lot of positives to say about it. And there are some negatives. I didn't really like the remake for the 3DS. I played it a little bit, but... Um, didn't care for the giant eyeballs? Yeah, the, the giant eyeballs they put on all the bosses, or how they gave uh, the, the Deku scrub, they made it slower for reasons. Well, yeah, the Deku scrub was too OP, you see. Yeah, I mean, sure, you could get places a little faster than you were supposed to, but, I mean, it's it's single player, so I don't really see the point of making it n- noticeably slower. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, it was. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a lot slower than the, the 64 version. Mm-hmm. Didn't they also take away yeah, one of the for when I can hop on water? Or am no. I misremembering? Yeah, I it's basically the, the spin allowed you to get uh, more distance yeah. during your first hop. And, after and because the hop, they slowed it down, it speed it, boost. I mean, I guess effectively you're right, because they slowed it down so you couldn't do that anymore. Yeah, but it made it a lot harder. Yeah, so doing that wasn't as good as it used to be. Because mm-hmm. originally you could spin and then you'd get a lot more distance with your hops, which 
once again, I don't really think that was a big deal. People probably didn't figure that out their first playthrough. Well, I mean, some people did, but not everybody. Or at least not right away. Truly, but, though, my favorite part about that game, though, sorry to cut you off, um, also happened to be uh, very a very mysterious portion of the game itself, yeah, too. I'm going to um, guess the Fierce Deities Mask. Fierce Deities Mask, indeed. Uh, after you've collected all the other masks and have turned them into the Children of the Moon, he says, uh, I see you have no masks to play this game with me, so I'm going to give you one. And he proceeds to tell you that it is somehow a greater evil than even him. Eh, without, that one probably could have used a bit of explanation, but without expanding I at all on that. get a fierce deity, uh, fierce deity game, even though they've teased it a few times. Mm -hmm. But most of that's just fan art. Um, but I still think it probably has one of the best time travel storylines that I've seen in a game. Mm -hmm. More so. Well, that's because time travel is usually done poorly. Yeah. Just being able to reset time and st like if you don't mess with stuff, it'll play out the same way every time. Or you can mess with stuff a little bit and it'll change it up a little bit or a lot based on what you do. Like for example, if you kill a uh, goat, it turns the the mountain from a frozen wasteland to an actually pretty nice place. Uh, it's the same with Ottawa too. Yeah. It changes all the poisonous sections of the swamp into clear, fresh water. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The the Zorons doesn't really change their area too much um the great yeah, bay i believe much. it was called it might get rid of some of the fog but i don't think it does it, it does a little bit but it doesn't overly change the area neither does uh killing uh twin nova twin rova rova oh yeah nova's rova. a different one isn't it nova's the yeah. witches yeah they're basically the same Two giant worms, two old witches. Mm -hmm. Very similar. But yeah, I I mean there was there's a lot to like about that game. I really found collecting the masks fun. I mean not all masks are created equally. Obviously, there are some masks that are kind of a pain to get and really only give you a heart piece, like the couple's mask. Mm -hmm. Uh the up all night mask. I don't remember exactly how to get that one off the top of my head, but I remember, I think that one you have to save the bomb lady, and you can buy it in the store later on the third night. This is one of those so. ones where you, you could figure it out. I mean, I believe, I believe that one's found in the curiosity shop. Yeah, you just gotta save the bomb lady on the first night. Mm, and then go through a little bit more. And I think there's something in between that and then, but I don't remember what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think you guys are forgetting the most important mask in the game, the dancing mask. Huh. Mm -hmm. Well, and the marching mask. Well, at least the marching mask is fun. entertaining. Although I think you can only use it. I think that one also only gives you like one or two heart pieces. But I only mm -hmm. the only thing I remember getting with it is the chicken one, where you got to dance and the chickens follow you until they poof into full grown chickens. I honestly yeah. forgot about that mask. Yeah, most of them were at least cool or memorable in some way or another. Like the rock mask. It makes it easy to kill pirates. Well, I think we can all agree, though. I think we can all agree, though, in that game, the bunny hood is probably one of the most fun. <laughs> it's one of the most Zipping useful. Around. Um, Go faced. Yeah, the bunny hood's a really useful mask. So is, uh, well, I mean, obviously the, the transformation masks are all really useful. But if you don't count those, let's see. Yeah, probably. I like the I like the Keaton mask the way it looked, but I think for versatility, the the mask that probably serves the most importance um, outside of the main transformation masks would probably be either the Bunny Hood or the Great Fairies mask. Yeah, I can see a case made for both those because. Mm -hmm. Getting things like the Great Fairy Blade or the Extended Magic or the Insulated Hearts. And I think the better charge... Yeah, the better charge is the other one. Mm -hmm. Like, getting all those is really useful to have. And you don't need it, but... I mean, all you have to do is put a mask on and you can get them relatively easy. And to uh, change the pace up a little bit, I'd like to talk about my third favorite game as well. 
one that during the release of the game was mostly frowned upon due to the the cosmetic look of the uh, or the art style of the game. Wind Waker. Itself. Yes, Wind Waker. Wind Waker by far is one of my favorite games. The fun characters, the expressions uh, on uh, starting Link's, in Hawaiian all, all, sure. yeah, on all the that, characters' faces. That Ganondorf. Yeah, that Ganondorf is crazy. A great Ganondorf. The ability to uh, basically still have fun while replaying the game, too. Give you the option to play through the game as basically the Hawaiian shirted protagonist from the beginning. Yeah, I believe on the New Game Plus mode, you could, if you snapped a picture of Ganondorf, you could get, like, some stuff. I don't remember actually, exactly what. Actually, I know you could get a book a picture, that lets you understand the dragon. If you snap a picture of Ganondorf in uh, the original playthrough of the game, it will actually carry over to the beginning of your New Game Plus. And you, huh. get, the, you can get the figure that way. That's how I did it. Yeah, I mean, I overall, I thought, I, w I was in the kind of the group where I didn't really like the look of Wind Waker when I first saw it, but once I started playing it, I realized it, it worked for what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Could they have changed yep. Link to not have a giant head? Maybe. I don't know. It didn't really bother me too much once I got used to it. And I thought the Master looked really cool in that one, mm -hmm. especially when it starts glowing. It was good for a light-hearted take on the, uh, the franchise. Despite it having... Easily the darkest, or one of the darkest stories out of all the Zelda games. This is true. Uh, kinda yeah, it's, it's up there. You. I mean, Hyrule is effectively destroyed in it. But I guess yeah, it's in the, the past. Link, like the, the previous Link the lost. This is true. Fallen hero story. Wow. Uh, no, it's adult Link timeline, oh, so... That's right. It, that's right. But, you know, Hyrule's destroyed... Uh, you kill Ganondorf by stabbing him in the face, which that was just well, amazing. You, you technically steal him again. Yeah, and let's face it, Ganondorf is used to getting stabbed in the face. He, he got stabbed in the face at the end of Ocarina of Time too, and he got better. yeah, but he was in his Ganon form with the Triforce of Power and whatnot. Or yeah, something. but he was in his well, I was he was in his Ganondorf form, and he got stabbed in the face in that one. So I don't, I don't know. I he comes back. We we know he comes back either way. Do we? Oh, well, I mean, I guess you could get no. arguments over the timeline. Yeah, if you go with the timeline, but I, Nintendo I doesn't pay attention to the timeline, so I mean, we probably shouldn't. I mean, if we switch it up again, I really like Hyrule Warriors, and I guarantee they don't put that in the timeline anywhere. Uh, oh. Clearly, that's the uh, child timeline. I thought that was clearly obvious. No, it, it would always be at the end, so they could pull from whatever Zelda games they want to add characters. Well, I, it couldn't be in any of the timelines on or the child timeline because it has Wind Just Waker characters. The timelines branch doesn't mean they'll end up in different places. It could very easily all lead back to the same place, and that could be the Hyrule Warriors one. But that's that's that a we're different not really topic. Talking about today, but yeah, I liked. Uh, even though it's not the most traditional Zelda game, I really did like. Uh, Hyrule Warriors. I thought a lot of the redesigns were neat. Being able to play characters on like, Link was cool. Uh, like Impa. Impa, uh, Ganondorf was really awesome in it. Uh, Zelda, she... Uh, pretty much every character was fun to play with the exception of, like, Tingle. Tingle. And, uh... I didn't like the the boat guy. The, the King of Lions. Yeah, or whatever I, did, I didn't much care for uh, him. the King of the Red Lions. He was slow for my taste, but... The Vagia was very fun to play. Oh yeah, Vag Vagia was amazing. So, what what games do you like, Ryan? Well, Wind Waker was amazing. I mean, it did uh, evolve the combat to make it, you know, way more fun. And then, you know, it had the fun little stealth section. I also had the really good the whole ending. I really enjoyed uh, the whole set piece of finding Ganondorf while the uh, the world was reflooding. I mean, that was just really cool looking. The art style uh, worked for the game's benefit, as you've already covered. Uh, the fact that it still looks good for, what, like a decade after it came I mean, I still think it looks fine. Yeah, and then they made it look even better with the uh, Wind Waker 8. It also had a couple of the fun bosses. You broke up there a little uh, bit, but I'm pretty sure you said Wind Waker HD. I yeah, Wind Waker um, HD. Then. 
but as you guys already covered, both Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time did a lot of really good things. I personally like Majora's Mask more because I like the I liked Majora more as a just the insane thing that it was. Twilight Princess, I mean, it had even better fighting mechanics than uh, Wind Waker, and Minda was cool, but there was there was that game had problems. I, uh, yeah, I liked it overall. I think I should. It, well, yeah, so do that. I. Um, uh, I, I haven't played one I didn't like, but yeah. Twilight Princess, the art style, just not my particular cup of tea. I actually like the art and style. Then ja- and then the Jack in the Box villain with Gandalf at the end was just kind of silly. She warned him. Yeah, because well, because Z- you I had Zant set up to be all cool, times but in the game, but they really should have introduced him probably at like a halfway point or, or so. Well, yeah, he's introduced. The f- right before you go to Hyrule Castle. Yeah, they talk about how he was like sealed and stuff. But like I'm saying, yeah, they should they... have brought him back earlier than that. Yeah. Earlier than uh, where he actually comes back, which is like at the very end of the game, where he randomly like, "Hey, Zant, thanks for saving me. I'm gonna betray you immediately." Yeah, it also had some really good set pieces. Like, uh, I I don't I don't know how most people feel about it, but uh, the Morfield fight, uh, which was the Water Temple boss. I mean, it was, oh, right. it, was a, it was a cool underwater. You had... I think the strongest boss in that game. I don't remember its name, but it was the Sky Temple one, the dragon. Uh, Argorok, I believe. I believe so. Yeah, that was my favorite fight in that one. Yeah, uh, that was a good one. Uh, Zant was hilarious uh, when you realize that he's just fucking insane. Puppet, Puppet Zelda is pretty fun. It was interesting to fight Zelda, I'll give it that, even though she is also not in her own game very much. No. Yeah, it that kinda... that game, a uh, weakness of Twilight Princess was Zelda, just because she had zero personality. She was very cold in that game. Well, she's barely in it. She's yeah, in... she's in it for all of, what, two scenes? Yeah, she's in it, like, at the scene where you first go to Hyrule Castle for reasons, and then at the very end. As a boss and a... Uh... She, she, yeah, she's there three times throughout the game when you first become a wolf, when you have to go treat Minna when she gets infected and she's all inverted. Mm-hmm. And then uh, at the end, I think for a grand total, she's on screen for... Well, however five... long it takes you to beat the boss, but... Let's all not forget Twilight Princess's most infuriating character, at least for my opinion, Merchant Baby. Are you are you saying that Mallow Mart wasn't the epitome of Zelda? Uh, I think I think Mallow was lacking a little bit in terms of uh, everything, not needing to be in the game. Yeah, I get. I mean, what they were going for is like these are your town, your hometown homies. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, yeah, but you didn't have to make them not cool at all. I'm glad that a baby knows how to run a mart, a market. Yeah. Maybe maybe he was older than he looked. They could have at least brought Beetle back. Well, Beetle oh, wasn't created yet. Or, no, yeah, yeah he was. Yeah. He's Wind Waker. Beetle's been in, like, four of them. He was yeah. in Skyward Sword. Uh... Yeah, Skyward Sword. There, there, there's a... I, I didn't really before, like before we move Skyward on. Sword, personally. Definitely not one of my favorites. I enjoy I, it for what it was. I, know, I really I liked Here I Am. I know the... Link, Link, a lot of people point out Link had like weird lips in it and stuff, but yeah, I that that was kind of strange too. But the art style, I was like, it's it's meh, and the Wii controls were just well, Wii controls they were better than other motion controls at the time. I'll give it that, but mm-hmm. yeah, I, I enjoyed Gear of Him. I enjoyed uh, a couple of the boss fights, other boss fights. So it had its things that did well, but it also had its things that didn't do so good. Like equipping but, the last two heart pieces? Well, yeah, that was the worst <laughs> part about the game. Gira him uh-huh. sure knew how to lick the competition. Right. I'll give you a good licking, sir. Careful. All these puns, you guys might have kids somewhere. Oh, no. But we should probably move on to, uh, you know... Yeah, we've probably nice touched topic. about Zelda games in general enough. We have we didn't really talk about Breath of the Wild at all. 
Which well, that's because it's should. the focus of this episode of Concept Art. A yeah, sequel so to Breath of the our, Wild. Our focus was, is going to mostly be on how we think they can improve a sequel to it, or even maybe ideas for like a continuation of that, sort of like they did with Majora's Mask, where it's not really related to the events of Breath of the Wild too much, but its own thing, just reusing assets and mm. mechanics, stuff like that, so it come, could come out faster. Of course, you know, they could very easily just not do that and remake its own whole art style because they've done that. I hope not. Much. They've done that for pretty much every Zelda game, so every Zelda game has a unique look, and I think the reason they do that is so Zelda games can be more easily differentiated from one another. Like, you know, even if it was... If you compare, like, Majora's Mask to Twilight Princess or... I haven't played it personally, but, like, Spirit Tracks to uh, Oracle of Seasons, they all look pretty different. And I'm, obviously there's the time period, technology available then, now. But... Yeah, but I don't want them to change the art style because uh, Breath of the Wild is going to look great still, you know, 10, 20 years from now. Uh, well, they might update it. I, I think they would probably change it, but... I, yes. I would assume they would also change it completely because it's it's what Nintendo does. But this is a you know just a whole. But that's not what we're talking about. So even though we just spent a few minutes talking about it, anywho, some things can't be helped. Yeah. So as far as Breath of the Wild goes, uh, my thoughts on the game is overall I liked it. It had a lot of uh, good things to it. It did have some pretty glaring flaws, which I really which really brought me out of giving it the same kind of masterwork things I would have given other games. Although I still think it is a very fun game to play and you probably should play through it. Because a lot of things that annoy me more annoy me because of how repetitive they can get. For example, there is a lot of open space with not a lot in it. Yes, there's Korok seeds and they're hidden all over the place. But eventually you'll realize that getting Korok seeds is more monotonous than enjoyable. Busy work. Oh, you don't like the giant golden turd? Yeah, and it just gives you a giant yeah, gold turd. Because, funny. The, the album thing I actually thought was a pretty good idea. But your reward going... for that one was also kind of... Yeah, yeah I mean... Because your reward was a picture of Impa you couldn't look at. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the going around when taking photos and getting like memories and stuff that was neat mm -hmm. I don't really consider the shrines dungeons per se but I would say they're like little mini puzzles basically where mm -hmm. you gotta use your weird the Sheikah Slate yeah Sheikah Slate power Funny. things and a lot of them some of them are really clever and then there's a lot of them that are just kind of unmemorable and then some of them that are just confusing Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we did them all. Like but... the Constellation one. Yeah, I, I, that Constellation one. Bit. That one was the only one I, like, walked out of because I couldn't figure it out and I had to go back to it later. Yeah, I did the same thing. And once you figure out what you had to do, I mean, I know I sat there and I was like, how did I miss this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, even though, personally, I didn't think the hint was very clear, but... I mean, I figured it out, so room. I guess I guess it was clear. Yeah, I mean, Aura figured it out. What you said, you figured it out pretty quickly when you yeah, entered I think the it room. Was the first one of us to figure it out. Yeah. I'm... Oh, easily. It's not to men or not to say that it didn't take me some time though. But uh, a lot of the environments as well look really good, like as far as their own unique look. Although some of them are, you're just like, why is this here? Like the darkness part up in the north. Mm -hmm. It's like this giant dark place. You know, like, is this a reference to a Zelda game? Maybe? It didn't seem like it to me. Nothing I could remember, at least. Although, one thing that was kind of funny. Uh, when I went there, I got the bright idea that, since it was dark, I needed light. So I could just go upgrade the skeleton suit. So I went around and was grinding for items to upgrade the skeleton suit. So I could have the light it offered. And it's, it's full benefits. So I could go back there and explore the area just to find out that suit does not light up shit. 
No. It, lo- <laughs> it lights up you and you alone. It, it's worse than like a candle. It makes the enemies easier for it to find you. Yeah, it does do that. Well, if you upgrade it, I think it gave you that friend monster thing with skeletons. Which actually does help in that area. Yeah. It's like the bonus was just us to damage if you're using uh, bone weapons. Oh, yeah, that might have been so. it. Yeah, I, th- yeah, I think you're right. It was if you were using skeleton limbs, it did more with them. Mm-hmm. Although, the main problem I had with the game was the weapon breaking system. Mm-hmm. And probably because, to me at least, it felt like the better weapons broke faster. I'm not sure if it was true, but I know, like, the Royal Guard stuff would break in, like, two hits. Or the Elite Royal Guard, or whatever the stuff up in Zelda's room is. Yeah, the black, uh, it looks like the Royal stuff that's all black and dark looking. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the Royal Guard stuff. Yeah, like, that stuff, it's like, oh, these are really powerful, but really fragile, and you're like, wait. But, but why? That seems like something that should be, like, a mid-tier item. Like, really good, but really fragile. Sort of like, uh, Crystal Weapons from Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. Where you're like, hey, these are good, but they kind of break quick. Yeah. Now, certain weapons that, understandably, uh, were, are made to break, like the rusted things. Yeah. Uh, Which but you can clean get... off with an Octorok. Mm-hmm. But if I get a large weapon from a, a Lionel, which way stronger than me and uh, the <laughs> Lionel can't break it but I somehow can there's, yeah. there's some kind of issue going on yeah, yeah. luckily the Lionel stuff at least the Silver Lionel crap was really strong it would last forever cause well you couldn't kill I mean I've, ki- I've killed it. yeah I killed I killed so many Lionels in my game that you know they're all just the Silver Lionels now so I've sure. I'm just got nothing but the all that their, their equipment they never dropped that stupid star thing that you need all for a bunch of stuff either. No, they didn't. Because I watched my, uh, another friend of mine. I saw him get like two or three star shards really fast from Lionel's. I spent, you know, I've put 200 hours in the game. And I've gotten maybe one star fragment from a Lionel. And it just it annoys me. Well, I'm pretty sure it's a, a chance to drop... Every time you, uh, well, every time you kill one, I don't the think there's are not on my side. I believe I've gotten two in my entire time playing the game, but that's about it. I don't remember. I, I know I've gotten a couple, but I don't remember where I got them from. It might have been Lionel's. I think you can get them from shooting the dragons, though. I just don't remember. Uh, I don't think. No, so. star shards can only be. Uh... They, they either Lionels? drop down out of the skies or Lionels, I believe. Mm-hmm. Oh, then I might have just found them falling out of the sky, because I don't remember yeah. getting one from a Lionel. They'll typically fall from the sky and light up the area a little bit, make a beacon. Yeah, but overall, um, as far as ideas for what they could do next with the series, the Sheikah Slate, although it had some weird powers, I think there's a lot of potential there, although I would kind of like them to get rid of that for a basically a new gimmick item or maybe improve upon the Sheikah Slate give it some more gimmicks because pretty much every Zelda game has a gimmick laid over it Majora's Mask had its mask Ocarina of Time had the Ocarina uh, Wind Waker had the boat and the wind Twilight Princess had a wolf yeah well it it, it did have a wolf mm-hmm. and that was Skyward Sword had wiggle game. physics and uh sword spamming just spin the Joy-Con or, or they were called Joy-Cons right no, Troy Concert Switch, it was a Wiimote. Wiimote? Yeah, just spin the Wiimote in a circle. <laughs> spin to win. It works just for Garen. Garen. Um, yeah, first form. But yeah, as far as what they could do next, uh, some of the things I think would be neat is um, maybe just kind of set it in a new area uh, of the world map. Not So you can use a different world map. You can do a little flashback where Link's, like, in the castle and it's getting rebuilt. And maybe, like, uh, Ganon has uh, some cultist or, you know, a general or a something. Up to nice. the, There's up still the entire Yeet. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, the have the clan, although you do kill their leader. There mm-hmm. could be someone else in charge, though. 
the sub leader takes over and he goes or, up north for a different sect of it. And they start trying to uh, cause problems. They're trying to resurrect Ganondorf, so now you're sent up there to stop him. One thing I would do a bit different for this particular idea, the gimmick I would go with would be you have basically a base or an outpost or a keep or something like that, and you could go around the world map in addition to being able to do some of the other stuff you did before, like the cooking and things. You can get materials to upgrade this base so it can be stronger. You would have to be careful so it doesn't end up like a lot of games with bases where you have to babysit, because that gets annoying. Mm -hmm. But of course, if nothing ever attacks the base, the base is, can appear pointless. So, there'd be, there'd be some balancing issues there and some play stuff. But that's uh, you, probably what I would do. You could always use the base more like uh, your home when you go to um, when you when you buy it from the the carpenters. Yeah, I mean it would effectively be that. Your home. You know, you could do things like you upgrade the bed and the bread. Uh, the bread. The bed gives you temporary uh, heart, more temporary hearts than it would normally. Got to bring um, home that bread. Yeah, you, you know, you get a kitchen so you can cook maybe with more ingredients to make better stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, get a blacksmith who can repair your shit. That would be a big help for the game overall, uh, I think. Easily. Put him enough. And then, obviously, Link has a Master Sword in it, so you'd have to come up with a reason for him to not have the Master Sword. And the thing I would do for that is, since Ganon was defeated and the sword was already effectively broken, seeing as how it has a freaking battery pack, Oh, your sword's out of juice. Stick it back in the charger and wait ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, is Link literally goes and he puts it back in the Temple of Time and allows the sword to heal. So, there. He doesn't have the sword. And you can go around the world map and get new weapons from things up there. Maybe bring back, uh, the other kinds of creatures that we've seen in different Zelda games. Personally, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, some of the Twilight people from Twilight Princess. Mm -hmm. Some people from that realm or something like that. Maybe somebody from Low Rule. Well, they've already brought in uh, the Rito from that game. Or from other games. Yeah. I guess you could bring back the Kokiri. Yeah, you could bring him back. The, uh, if you look at the art book uh, for Breath of the Wild with all the concept art and shit in it, uh, one of the champions was initially going to be a Kokiri. Yeah, and um, Saber, do you remember the uh, the green swords of the river from uh, the older Zelda games? The green river of the river. The river green Zora. Zora. They're they're no, green. River Zora. Oh, okay, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, they were initially going to be in the game in some form or fashion. So I mean, that could be a cool idea to bring back as a new servant of Ganondorf hmm. or Ganon. Yeah. That could be that could work, um, something like that. I mean, Gan games. Gandorf, you're probably gonna stick with Moblins, but you could put things like Sculptras up there. So there weren't any in Breath of the Wild. And I think well, with that art kinda, style, that could probably look pretty cool. They kind of replaced uh, River Zora in that game with the Lizalfos. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure they could figure it out. Iron Knuckles would be pretty cool to. Put, you could put Iron Knuckles up there, or uh, mm -hmm. Dark Nuts, because I don't think Dark Nuts were in uh, Breath of the Wild. N no, we had the uh, Yiga Swordsman as yeah, the closest probably, thing. Probably the closest. But yeah, dark, you bring Dark Nuts back, you put them up there, you can put some uh, Wiz Robes up there, some of, some cooler ones, and the stuff like that. There's lots of stuff you could do, especially if your whole thing is you're trying to stop a, a, Ganon, a Ganon cult from resurrecting him. Mm -hmm. And they could kind of probably do it in a similar way where you start off with, like, you know, you go around, you start off with kind of minimalistic stuff, and you have a big area you can go quest and you can only go over here, you can take out these guys, which will stop that, which in turn will change up what the other guys get done, so maybe you could have that be like a chain reaction game so you can play through it a, a few times to change up how the ending works. Or how you fight the boss. Give it a kind of like a time limit sort of thing almost. Mm -hmm. 
So if, you know, the Dark Nuts are trying to rebuild the weapons of Demise or some nonsense, and you, instead of fighting them, go and take out the Octorok Alliance. That's just silly. Uh, <laughs> you go take them, you go take them out, and, you know, all of a sudden... Zelda. Little known fact, they're actually the ones who created the demise. And Ganondorf. The Octorok Alliance. The most dangerous of people. Well. His father was an Octorot, and his mother was a Magikarp. Uh, I'm not sure about Magikarp, but. His father was an Octorok, and so was his mother. Um. It all makes sense now. I'm sorry. And his father was an Avocado. Uh, okay. Now it makes double plus sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's say you, you you know, you go take out, instead of going to take out the dark, whatever, you know, faction A, you instead go to faction B, and faction B, and, you know, because you went and took them out, faction A gets to complete one of their things that will affect what the final boss has, like, you go stop one side, maybe he isn't able to summon minions, you go stop another side, maybe he doesn't have a weapon, which would stop him from having certain attacks. Things like that. It's kind of how I'd balance around choosing where you go first. It's kind of like a player choice sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Better than a freaking loot box. There's a few things that I'd like to see with the uh, with the new Breath of the Wild type game. I'd like to see the reemergence of dungeons come back. The shrines yeah. were okay, but they were a little too... There were, like, many puzzles, basically, and most of them had, like, a single gimmick to them. And typically, the reward for beating it just didn't pay out. You got this little this little orb that, once you collected four of them, uh, gave you either a heart piece or... <laughs> what you got I a have? Deku Leaf with durability up. Yay. Uh, yeah. Hey, man, you keep that thing till the end of the game. Typically. Um, so, I'd like to see dungeons. I'd like to see some... Some newer, unique bosses again. Uh, I've kind of had enough of the uh, the Ganon beasts. Yeah, I, I would probably get away from the uh, Ganon blights. Oh, the blights. Or the blights. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thunder blight, fire blight, uh, like, gun blight. The only blight that I thought was fun to fight was uh, the, the lightning blight. blight or thunder blight. The other ones were just kind of easy. With the, I mean. I had a little goof up with the uh, the fire blight, but that's because for whatever reasons I didn't think to just throw a bomb at him when he was using his power of suck. The the air based one was a little annoying. Uh, yeah. That was probably the easiest for me, just because it's it was gun blight and your gun is slow, and I can also fly because mm -hmm. of the arena. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, the gun gun blight. I think it was Windblight, wasn't it? No, it's Gunblight. Pretty sure it was actually Windblight, but... Yeah, he, he... A lot of them, when you're watching them, you're sitting there going, how did the hero or the champion lose to him? But you do see that, at least in the flashbacks with the DLC, that uh, at least Mifa got backstabbed. Yeah. If you talk to her ghost at the Divine Beast, I believe is where it tells you that. So, where is that? Something that probably could have helped the the blights is in the DLC you find out that Daruk was afraid of dogs. And it's like, okay, well that's kinda goofy, but could you imagine how awesome the fire blight would have looked if it was like a giant fire wolf thing? Like it took on their uh Oh, like the blight took on their fears or something. Yeah. Cause out of all of them, the only one that had the I think had the actual skill to kill a champion would be Thunder Blight. Because uh, that one was really fast. Was like, yeah, that made that made some sense. But like, you know, you see, I mean, the DLC should have been that cutscene should have been the base game. But Daruk is afraid of dogs, so you see the uh, he has to fight like a giant for wolf. You could kind of understand mentality would be working against him there. All right, yeah, I mean, I could see something like uh, something like that. You are still kind of breaking up a bit though. Um, it was called Wind Blight, by the way. I know it's called Wind Blight, but okay. Gun Blight is the superior Fair name. Fair enough. Because it has a gun. Yeah. So, Gun Blight. Yeah, he was. He was 
I mean, most of them were pretty easy. The only one, the only one that actually knocked me down and I I lost to was uh, Thunderblight. The other ones like same didn't even come close. Mm-hmm. Especially Ganon. Oh, there's a letdown. Ugh. Let's all fight a giant uh, spider golem fire mech thing. It looked like a bunch of nano Lots machines of kind of just grabbed a bunch of shit and turned yeah. it into a spider. Well, if you if you go, obviously this is a very particular part of, of YouTube and stuff, or like the Zelda theorist people, or a friend of mine showed it to me, but is... kind of. But yeah, you look at the how Ganon looks, and you can actually see like a humanoid skull forming underneath all of the malice and stuff. With all the tech and, like, the one arm and stuff, kind of looks like it's trying to reform a... He, he interrupted it. Regardless, the boss fight was more annoying than hard. Mm -hmm. Or uh, fun. I, get, I see what you... I mean, I see what you mean, where... It wasn't really fun. It was a lot of dodging around and waiting for the prompt to attack. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I guess I gotta wait for him to attack me so I can do the backflip so I can dash in and hit him a whole bunch. Because otherwise, he's invulnerable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after the third phase, I think it is. Yeah. And it's, it was it was a shame, too, because, like I said, the majority of the bosses, e even a lot of the field bosses, like the big rock guys and the, uh... Oh, the, the uh, Talos, the Talos and the Hinox. Yeah, the Hinox. Even they kind of were lame. I thought the Lynels were harder than they were, and Lynels didn't even get a health bar. Like, yeah, that does. that's still the thing that probably baffles me more than any other choice in the game, is Lynels have a health bar. They have more health than damn near every other boss in the game. Mm -hmm. Are Lynels vulnerable to a particular type of weapon? Mm, not that I'm aware of. They're not, like, weak to fire or ice weapons or anything? Uh, not, I guess I'm not that I'm aware of. Well, that sucks. I remember when I saw the monster saddle, I thought you could ride one and, like, take it as a mount. They made it seem that way. Yeah. I was told this you is... can use that to ride bears, but I, I never actually saw a bear in the game. You could use it to uh, to reliably ride deer. Um, I have seen a few bear. i never tried to ride them. I rode a bear. I finally found one. Did you use a monster saddle? I don't remember. If you ride a bear, can you like use the monster saddle? I wonder if you can like use the monster saddle to put it into the uh, the stable. I I got on the bear and then I got shot off by an arrow from something. Oh. Well, either way, so I was what like, are Dang your it. ideas uh, for a sequel? Since we digressed, mm -hmm. sequel uh, continuation. However you want to put it. Are you asking me or uh, Aura? I was asking you. Oh. Um, All right. Maybe I'm breaking up too. I just don't realize it. I, I didn't hear you say me in particular, so I assumed uh, you were talking to Aura. But... Well, you were the last one that talked. So. Yeah. But, I mean, Aura never really went into what he would do other than a few things mechanically. Um, I can talk about that real quick. Yeah, uh, go ahead. So... One thing that kind of annoyed me with uh, Breath of the Wild, I felt like it severely lacked on a lot of uh, like end game content. There, there wasn't a lot to do after you got pretty much used to all the combat and everything. There's no, there's no huge threat that's making you uh, yeah, continue the, through the game. Yeah, the different colored game. like mobs and shit showing up. Mm -hmm. Really, just kind of made shit take longer. It wasn't really harder though. And then you couldn't even say that Lionels were that big of a threat at that point, because they just got annoying after a while. Yeah, they're they easier to just avoid. Threat. So that's what you do. Hey, yeah, after you learn their AI, the best use for them is just basically to uh, waste your time and to degrade all your weapons you use against them. They have more health than than anything. Yeah, uh, and like what you were saying, you, you, you kill a Silver Lionel and you get its gear. That mm -hmm. gear will break before you kill a Silver Lionel. 
correct. Which is silly. Mm hmm So anyway, you can continue. Sorry. This is just That's a fine. cliff uh, note. Yeah. One thing that really did annoy me, I spent a lot of time in the game just exploring the world outside of the, the main and the side quests, seeing if there was anything fun to find. Um, I mean, outside of Korok Seeds, the, the world just seemed incredibly empty. Uh, not even a monster to be found. Um, I feel like... Even if they didn't want to do anything extravagant with, uh... With these empty areas, they could have put maybe some... Some fun content in, uh... Maybe... Maybe a wink to something in the Zelda franchise, or... Uh, they, they had a lot of like little winks hidden standing all over around, the place, but yeah, yeah. But these these empty areas just seemed like they held so much potential, and it just didn't deliver. Yeah, yeah like um, like the mountain range just uh, north of like the Grudu sit, Gr uh, the mm -hmm. Gruda city, Grudo. A lot of the Grudo coastal, town. Yeah. A lot of the coastal land, uh, as well. Just very empty. Uh, like, that whole mountain range over there. Yeah, the Yiga clan base is kind of, like, in there. Mm -hmm. and there's that big sword. But there's a lot of just the side of it. It's, it's just mountains. Well, the sword itself is part of a, uh, a, a small quest. Yeah. But I know what you're saying. I Go agree find the that. golden gauntlets and use it as a weapon. <laughs> See? That'd be awesome. I think that was probably another thing that it since you your inventory was all disposable, the mm -hmm. fact you couldn't find things like a hookshot really kind of stand out to me. Mm -hmm. Or the less superior hook claw. Claw shot. No, the the hook claw is the I think it, I think that was called hook claw. The rope that you swing. Yeah. You use swing and uh, wind waker. Yeah. No ones of truth or anything like that either. Well, I think Breath of the Wild. Um... It, it kind of, it's going to be, sound strange, but it tried to do a lot of telling the story through the world itself, like, but it doesn't honestly give you enough to actually say anything. Like, there's that giant gash in the ground called, like, uh, the, scar, the Scar of Demise, yeah. And you're just like, oh, cool. How does this tie into things? Because it looks, it's crazy looking. And, uh, if you follow, if you follow the Scar of Demise... Uh, it'll take you to a cave with a lot of guardians. Yeah. Like, that area is pretty cool. When I first came across that and I saw the name pop up, I was like, oh, cool. I can't wait to see how this ties in later. And I had, there was, I did a lot of that through the game where it was just like, uh, oh, there's. Like how you can go to Lalon Ranch? Well, it's mm -hmm. just a ranch. It's wow. like destroyed. It, it, I know what yeah, it's obviously supposed to be a uh, reference to Lalon Ranch, but. Or, uh. There's like that giant uh, temple in the cavern that's just full of guardians and shit. The Forgotten Temple. Mm -hmm. And I think there's one NPC that mentions that, hey, I heard a rumor that there's a temple there. Or the there's a giant tree that's way bi that's bigger than the Great Deku Tree that's just overturned and hollowed out uh, on the lands. Like, what was this? Probably Nothing. Great Deku Tree, if I had to guess. I mean, so, it, yeah, it, it it's does like take not some, that thick. There is it a has, lot of yeah. stuff that kind of leads into things like that where you'd probably have to guess how it worked or what happened yeah, I know. there. It's similar because yeah. it's similar to Souls in that respect, at least. But anyway, yeah, and I, 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 yeah. Or some of the uh, some of the ruins in the forest. Yeah. Uh, like the green, like the like the dragon ruins where all the Lizalfos like to hang out. Yeah. They, they could do something like that. To help mm -hmm. make it a little bit better. So, what other stuff would you do for your uh, sequel then? For my Idea. sequel, if they wanted to bring Ganon back, I want to see him as more of a threat. Not just this lingering... What they tried to make him as is a sense of doom, but I never felt that. If you, if you went off and did side quests, there was literally nothing stopping you from doing that. There's no... Uh... Yeah, the closest thing gives like the blood moon, and you that's have the just blood moon and an excuse after, to let enemies respawn. After a while, it pretty much just after uh, 
I, th I believe the Blood Moon is based off of how many enemies you kill in your gameplay, or your playthrough, because my Blood Moon would go off. Oh, I thought it was it felt like every week. day, towards um, the end of my play, um, I was getting it all the time, and it was I just kept resurrecting the monsters I had just killed. At least that was my see. If you were to incorporate the base that Saber mentioned earlier, a good way to kind of add some um, urgency in your gameplay. Could be sieges or uh, something of that nature. You have to run off in between sieges and try to uh, complete your goal. Maybe completing your goal would slow the sieges down, or would also add to um, trying to make the end game easier for you. One thing I would definitely like to see is a. I want to see what what it would look like if Ganon was actually revived see if if he would pose as big of a threat as they think he would you guys have any takes on that no I, I kind of agree i was looking at how the blood moon actually works and yeah it, apparently it does go off of how many enemies you kill like just ganon coming back uh, ganon i would love to see an intelligent ganondorf come back but if it was just if it was just you know, i'd I really could, like to see ganondorf come back yeah I, I could see wanting him to come back he could use you could use him coming back, give him a bit of a presence, or at least, you know, an enemy with a presence, even if it's not necessarily Ganondorf. Mm -hmm. You could do something crazy. You could be like, oh, look, it's Ganondorf's, you know, I don't know, kid or sibling or dad or something. Or is this like a direct sequel or, you know, same engine, but however many generations later? A direct sequel. Okay, you could do, um, like, Ganondorf's descendant, then. That could be something that'd be pretty neat, considering a Gerudo male supposed to be born every hundred years. Is that still a thing in Breath of the Wild? Because I didn't see... They, I... the Gerudo mentioned that they, there's a legend that Ganon was once a Gerudo. And that the, and... the Gerudo is upset about it. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so, I remember maybe? talking about that in a flashback, but... No, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe, you. maybe every... Once in a rare while, there's a Gerudo man born. Mm -hmm. The Gerudo seem kind of like Asari for Mass Effect in a way. More or less, uh, they're the Asari before the Asari were a thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's meant like how they. I understand. Procreate. One thing I could see, there could be. What I'd like to see is uh, two main kind of nemeses, quote unquote, final boss esque type villains. Two characters that. Uh, have basically been around from the beginning that uh, hmm. have the potential to stay around for a long, long time. Those being the Phantom Ganon and Shadow Link. We hmm. don't get enough of these two. I had a different idea where I thought you were going with that, but I'll go into oh. that later. All right. That so, I really dig the idea of both Shadow Link and Phantom Ganon. Maybe if these two are on the case of trying to resurrect him in a different part of the world, it could explain why they weren't present in, in Hyrule at the time. Maybe they had to go off and plan B for unleashing him. Hmm. They know nothing about what, what happened down in the south. It'd be a reasonable way of, uh, uh, would retconning them in be the correct term? Uh, not necessarily. Um, Cause they, they, were, they yeah. weren't up there in the first place. Nobody knew but, about yeah. it. I, I meant the fact that they probably, you know, like, let's say they weren't thought of, and then uh, they decided to have them in retroactively. I'm not, I'm not saying, like... It might be, but I don't know if they were... Well, I mean, a retcon isn't necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. The thing I thought he was going for was he was saying, like, um... And this is just how I would have probably gone about with what he was saying is, uh... Basically, Ganondorf, you know, he was being cocooned or whatever by Zelda, sort of, since she was using her magic to keep him imprisoned in the castle, uh -huh. sort of. But his powers were still seeping out. Uh-huh. I would have had maybe bring back, make a callback character like use Twin Nova for example, the two witch sisters, mm -hmm. have them be basically they were siphoning off Ganon's energy out of the cocoon, which was stopping Zelda from sealing him and letting them do the Blood Moon. So they were using his power to basically rule somewhere else, and he was basically a battery for them at that point since they knew that they were stuck in a stalemate, and. You know, now that he's broken free, they're like, oh, well, well, you know, he's been killed or sealed again? I think he was killed. I think he was killed, but I can't remember. 
So yeah, you know, you go up there and those two are like, well, they're two boss characters, so you can go, you gotta go deal with them, and, you know, as evil rulery types tend to do, they probably don't get along all that well. So you basically gotta stop them from uniting, so it'd be like two boss characters you could go fight. That's where I thought you were going with it. But the idea of having uh, Shadow Ganondorf be doing it, I think that would work pretty too. Um, Shadow Shad Link Shad might be a little weird, just because Shadow Link, I guess he's still technically controlled by Ganon, so that could work too, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, also, there's all kinds of things you could do uh, mechanically that would probably be pretty interesting in terms of a boss fight with Shadow Link. You can do uh, the yeah. yeah, but you know, if you can also do like the flurry of rush style i mean that would make him extremely dangerous oh, especially if he has a very especially if he has like you know a strong weapon mm -hmm. it could if he, i'm not sure you would want to give him the exact same mechanics as link has That's a mechanic giving him like a similar moves that would probably be fine but i wouldn't do uh things like the flurry attack thing just because well enemies tend to hit harder than main characters just kind of in general for those kinds of guys. I mean, a Moblin hits you for, what, like three hearts? I think. Or, well, the blue ones, I think, do. So, yeah, I could see being a little difficult if you get Flurry, but, I mean, you could give him a, a version of a Flurry that I think would work. Uh, I mean, obviously, you wouldn't want the enemy to slow down time. Like, I, I know what you meant, but, yeah, obviously, I mean, obviously, you wouldn't want him to do that, but he, I have him, like, dash in if you miss, and he stabs you a bunch of times. Yeah. That could be pretty cool. Or, you know, he you go to do a thrust, he steps on your blade and kicks you in the face. Disarms you. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. That's what lightning enemies do. Mm -hmm. Have him, have have the fight with him contain a whole bunch of wall masters. So they just are... So, like, in the middle of the fight at any point, one of them can grab you and throw you back to the beginning of the dungeon. Oh. <laughs> that sounds both amazing and awful. The um, double A. Yeah. There's been a few bosses that have a instant uh, get out of my dungeon type move. Like the the bouncy serpent from um, the, A Link to the Past. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. It's been a while since I played any any of those. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I know the one you're talking about. Maybe bring back Like Likes. That's just kind of a random yeah, thought. It is A Link to the Past in the Tower of Hera. Yeah, I kind of see what you're saying, though. Like, give two uh, antagonists to chase around mm -hmm. who are trying to do something that you don't want them to do, so you got to stop them. Either they succeed or they don't, depending on how the game developer wants to handle it. Yeah, I mean, you could give it so you can effectively cuss, like I was saying, like, that would work pretty well with what I was kind of saying, where, you know, you chase them around and stop them from doing certain things, and things you stop them from doing affects what kind of ending you would get, mm -hmm. giving it some replay value. Sure. Of course, if you did something like that, it would probably make the game a little bit shorter, just so people could actually would actually want to replay it multiple times. I mean, I don't mind playing through a multi-hour game a bunch of times, but I know not everybody does, and they tend to try to appeal to mass audiences instead of niche audiences. Mm -hmm. So what are your ideas for a sequel, Ryan? Or remake, or... Well, not remake. Well, but... yeah, not, not a remake. <laughs> not yet. Give it a few years. Well, for a sequel to Breath of the Wild, you're going to want to fix, you know, the issues that came with it, because every game has issues. You're going to want to build and improve upon the things that uh, people both liked and disliked. Uh -huh. Outside of the weapons breaking so easily, which a new people, uh, myself included. That could be easily so, fixed, though, with, like, yeah. an item like Repair Powder. Yeah, like repair a blacksmith of some sort. But the main thing that I heard, uh, I've seen people complain about is the story for Breath of the Wild, since, I mean, as we have discussed, it's there and it does a lot of things good, but it's also giant chunks of it seem to be missing. Yeah, well, that's more from the style of what they did. The 100 year time yeah. skip was not the greatest idea. And I think it worked for what it did needed to. It could, but obviously not as well as they probably wanted. But some of the things that they you know 
people like the whole armor customization. So bring that back. You're going to bring back more. You're going to bring more armors into it. More uh, weapon variety. Like, uh, remember the ball and chain from uh, Tw- I would probably Princess? say go with like a loadout kit almost. Like, you find weapons throughout the world that you can take back to your base and upgrade. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to the idea of the base, uh, sort of. I'll get to that in a second. Because so I will get into the bit of the story idea for the game. Similar to you guys, you know, something you have to travel out of Hyrule so they don't reuse the same app because they're not going to want to. You know, it takes place a couple of years after Breath of the Wild. Monsters have been on the decline because of a lack of Blood Moon resurrecting them. Then uh, there's a festival, you know, it's the whatever anniversary of the defeat of Ganon. And all the Blood Moon rises once again. And everyone starts freaking out. And there's a giant horde of monsters that come and attack uh, Hyrule Castle. You know, still a still recovering Hyrule Castle. So it's not all completed. But they got catapults and stuff. And this first area would uh, be you know, tor- uh, the tor- kind of like the Great Plateau, but more focused and linear. And I know some people hate that, but for the well, idea I, of I work... I get I, what you're saying. It'd be like a tutorial area. Yeah. The... So you'd have to go, and there'd be giant, ca- there'd be catapults or trebuchets or whatever, flinging uh, explosive barrels up the Hyrule. And you gotta go, you gotta go take these things out. So the way there, things have blocked your path, and you're gonna have to use the Sheikah Slate and use it to, you know, move objects or get through the obstacles, what have you. And then at the end of this little t- tutorial area, you would see the, you'd have a bit of a mini boss in the form of like a, a moblin chieftain or something. And you know, you'd fight him and you take him out, and it's like, okay, you know, you're winning the battle. This is all grand. And then off in the distance, away from Link, you'd see a, a mass of the malice from that Ganon through everywhere. And, you know, people thought this is, most of this stuff had been gone. But, you know, it's all actually just kind of congealed under one thing. And this, it would be in a humanoid-esque shape. And it would fly into Hyrule Castle and take, uh, I'm not quite sure what that would be yet. It's kind of, it kind of be the MacGuffin to get the plot going. But then he would uh, fly out and... And then Zelda would send you in, like, a... So, yeah, so someone takes whatever, and then they have to send forces to follow after him, which would include yeah. Link. It would be Link, and it would be, like, a ship or two going to follow this thing, which would be Phantom Ganon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like a Phantom Ganon made up of... Malice. malice. Yeah, it'd be, uh... The boss name would be Lingering Malice Phantom Ganon. Because I think it sounds cool. But, you know, on your way to the ship, you know, Link's all... He's hes a strong hero at this point. You know, he's got all these... Uh, on the way there to this island that they believe he's gone to, the ship is attacked by some kind of sea monster. And the mass is knocked from Link's hand and sinks into the ocean. And, you know, the ship is partially wrecked, but it's still going. But Link was knocked off, so he's just kind of floating in the water. And then the, the next morning, Link would be washed ashore on an island. And that island would be the main area of the game? Yeah, it'd be the main area. And it'd be like Ganon's stronghold before he went insane in terms of just the creature of rage, the Calamity Ganon. All right. So you go to this uh, island and then you're basically on a quest to go around the island, maybe stopping power sources or something or another through dungeons to get into the castle? Yeah, I'd do that. Uh, You'd find... It wouldn't be directly there because it'd be kind of like the first Breath of the Wild because a lot of people like the fact that you could just kind of go anywhere. And, you know, you start off on the beach and there'd be a guy to tell you about the, the gimmick of the game. The gimmick of the game would be a diving suit to go into deeper water and because right. it's an island, so it's not going to have as much uh, mountains on it, but they're probably not going to want to completely get rid of the, di- the climbing mechanics. So you can kind of, in my head, I could see it working where you kind of retrofit it to working like, Cl- like so going deep underwater. Bar, it's a dive bar. Yeah. Okay. But it gives you a, d- a diving suit, so you can kind of go into the water, and. Well, I mean, you could probably have diving work without a diving suit. Just. It's a, yeah. As well. And then the diving suit would be an item you get later to give you more breath. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, regardless, the right at the beginning kind of tell you, and then after he tells you about it. The, the rest of the island's open. You can go wherever. Now, you could find where your ship of Hylian soldiers landed, and they'd be building a fort of some kind, and that would kind of work as a safe area. 
you'd also find little pockets of civilization, little towns and stuff filled with like uh, Deku scrubs or other highlands or whatnot that fleed or fleed fled uh, high rules that was being destroyed by Calamity Ganon. They have no idea what's happened a hundred plus years. They just know like a hundred years ago, Calamity Ganon came and started wrecking everything. They didn't even realize this was his island. I kind of like the idea of bringing back the uh, the Deku Palace. Yeah, so do I. I, I love that song. All right, I can kind of see that going. But, you know, us people... Uh, I think, I think got... a tropical setting for a Zelda game would work pretty well. I mean, that yeah. worked well enough for Wind Waker. And then uh, people really like Sidon. Uh, he comes in at Ooh. Mifa's brother. Mm-hmm. Oh. He's very popular. Is he? I didn't. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you bring uh, you could bring Sidon later after because you'd have your four main dungeons that would you'd have to take those out to take out Phantom Ganon, his tower or castle, Ganon's tower or castle, whatever you want to want to be. But, but the castle itself would be all kinds of ruins. But I actually probably wouldn't for what you're talking about. I wouldn't have Ganon's castles be in ruins. I would have it still be fully a fully functional castle. It, it'd be neglected, uh, maybe the better word for it, then, just because it's not... Abandoned? It's not abandoned, but it's not exactly being in, uh, taken the best care of, because it's got moblins and shit taking care of it. Yeah, I can't really see them uh, uh, doing much know. maid work. I think, yeah. I think the way I would do this castle is... I mean, this is your idea, obviously, but... Oh, I'm, I'm open to hearing... Uh, for me to throw in my totally asked for opinion... The way I think I would design this castle is I would fill the like the courtyard and the lower areas with basically, well, at first you wouldn't even be able to get in there until you defeated the dungeons, is how I would do this. And then once you defeat the dungeons and you get the items or whatever mechanics are set around that, you can then go into the dungeon and progress through. And basically, the first couple floors of the dungeon would be big and there'd be lots of puzzles and moving stuff. And as you get go up the dungeon, I would probably introduce uh, constructs like Dark Nuts. Because I think Dark Nuts are just suits of armor. I well, think they have not, fleshy bits. I know there's fleshy bits in some some of them. But yeah, so, the, so basically the castle would seem abandoned on the first couple floors. But then as you go higher up, it, it has like Dark Nuts or, and stuff in it. And you have to fight them. And then as you start going up, it starts turning into more of a... A battle tower, so you do lots of puzzles yeah. in the beginning, and then as the tower, as you know, as it turns narrower to go up to the throne room, it starts to become like a uh, boss battle areas where you fight like Iron Knuckles or Dark Nuts, Wiz Robes. Well, you it's funny you should mention. Uh, you just keep fighting these things as you get all the way up to the top to Phantom maybe, Ganon. Maybe the haunted throne room or something with Phantom Ganon. Yeah, uh, it's funny you should mention Iron Iron, uh, Iron Knuckles though because. An uh, idea for a mini boss in the tower I had. Remember Salt and Pepper from Ocarina of Time? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be That's that. That's what but... I was describing, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'd have salt. You'd have two uh, iron knuckles, but because obviously they they're not still going to be living Gerudo, they'd be redead iron knuckles. Hmm. That's so kind of like well, a, re- a redead dead. knight. You could fill the oh, bottom yeah. layer with redead. I think that would work. Yeah, that. I'd, I'd probably put a. I'd bring back some old enemies on the sides, like likes, some other uh, things. Well, yeah, if it's a tropical environment, I think uh, like likes would be a good enemy to bring back. I think sculptures would be a good enemy to bring back, but yeah. they're, little, they're freaky looking, so I like them. But quickly backtracking to my idea with Sidon, though, when you whatever you have to complete some quest and then he'll arrive later. He's part of a side quest you do to get the Master Sword back, since it'd be lost at sea. And then you'd have to basically, you know, go down into the ocean uh, with sea down there, and it'd be like a giant that attacked your ship, and that'd be the boss fight. I guess you could do a kind of like Morpheal, but hopefully better. I'm I'm just pitch I'm trying to picture it, and I'm uh, in my head what I'm picturing is it's gonna sound kind of weird, but so an open dungeon. Um, and the way, what I mean by that is it, it's filled with wide open expanses of ocean. Yeah. And then once you get to the bottom, you can find where the master sword is 
and maybe then there'd be to... other treasures of you know you could like try and link it to other things like fan servicey. I mean, you don't really need fan service. You maybe, don't. You don't really need to. Maybe an but... Easter egg or two. Throw the ship of the Red Lions down there. That'd be funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, you, you swim down there, and maybe there's a couple. There's like a sunken ship or two, and or even a ship graveyard, and you have this big water serpent or kraken or whatever you would make it be uh, down there. And There's then, a couple ideas you can go with. You could go with like a giant crustacean kind of thing, uh, or you could go with a kraken. You could go with uh, I mean, more what it like is, more field. Is it really too important other than the yeah. fact that it's the boss down there? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And once you get down there, you know, then you can fight it and get the master sword back. And the master sword, because it does double damage, the malice would be really effective against Phantom Ganon. Yeah. But. Do you guys remember the Breath of the Wild quest thing where you had to fight Nadra and Nadra's all covered in malice? Oh, the... Yeah, the, the dragon? A uh, giant ice dragon. Oh, yeah, yeah. The blue one. The dragon of wisdom. The only one you do get to fight. Yeah. But, but the other ones you just kind of shoot with arrows to steal their farm. fleshy bits. Exactly. Like like a real hero does. Shoot um, off its toenail. You just grind uh, but, of them. Yeah. One of the things I'm surprised... I, I kind of wanted to see... I, I ran through that quest really fast. It was like the first major side quest I did. Um, it's probably like the second town, so... Yeah, but the other people went in other directions, I'm sure. I, I thought for sure we're, there was going to be more stuff like malice infecting things. There was I, a lack of that. Well, my, here's another idea for a boss on this island. There'd only be one great the island, but you'd have to free her from Malice. Yeah, it's a, uh, like a great fairy covered in Malice. How would it work? I'm not entirely sure yet, but it was just a quick idea I thought would be neat. The way I would probably do a great fairy Malice mutation boss fight kind of thing is I would have fairies hidden around the island, and you rescue them, and once you rescue enough of them, they can let you inside, and once you get inside, you can fight the fight the great fairy and after you fight the great fairy she in turn then can upgrade the master sword on like a regular smith so, I think that sounds like a pretty good mechanic for it so like for example you go in there and she can give you a I mean they don't have a magic bar but say they brought the magic bar back she could give you you know more stuff to do with it or she could give you the ability to not have the master sword break anymore or she can upgrade armor to uh, level 5, whereas smiths can only upgrade to level 4. Something like that, yeah. Where basically yeah. she's the better smith. Yeah. And the enchant. Or she can enchant your shit. So, like, what do you if say... you upgrade an item to max level, she can then enchant it. What do you say about these ideas, uh, Aura? Well, most of it sounds pretty good. I like the idea of having, like, a master smith or an enchantress. Yeah. Good idea. I would. A lot of our ideas sound similar as far as how we would do a sequel. Well, we've talked to each other about these. I mean, things yeah, we've talked to so each other about it too. So yeah. obviously, yeah. it's influenced a bit. But I, I mean, that's pretty much what we could get out of how we would do a sequel and things we'd like to see in it. I mean, people can agree or disagree. I think yeah. most of that sounds like it'd be pretty good for a sequel. And I think it could be done well. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I would definitely change is to make sure you don't feel like you're, you know, you're janitoring the aftermath of a big battle like you kind of do in, in uh, Breath of the Wild. So in this yeah, one, you that, feel like yeah. you're a more central hero to the story. Yeah, and I and think we've all Zelda said games, that same thing. Yeah, and because Zelda games tend to have either... You know, you're saving something from something else. You don't necessarily need to go save the princess, but, you know, trying to stop the bad guy is good enough from resurrecting the Calamity. I think that's a good enough motivation. I like the idea of having it be on an island more than to the north because that gives you a giant area around the island where you can have pretty much an open map that ex you understand why there's edges to it, you know. Because out there, it's just open ocean. Dropping the Master Sword into the water is a good thing to do. 
Yeah, because you're, you're, you're gonna have a link that's all or the hero, so people like, are gonna like. Whatever reasons you couldn't have the master sword in the game, you can easily just have Link not bring it with for reasons. You just have to explain why. <laughs> it needs to heal. Yeah, it needs to heal. Maybe uh, Zelda. Took it. Zelda, Zelda's like you took a hundred years to rescue me, you dick. I'm taking the sword back and finding a new champion. It, it'll be Daruk's descendant, that fat Goron kid. Yeah. He's two champions in one. You see, he's big enough for it. So yeah, I mean, I think that works out pretty good. So I think overall, how we're, from what we've all said is, we would kind of like to see something basically set in an almost tropical environment. Putting it on an island, you can still have a. I mean, I, personally, having a whole bunch of bi biomes is neat, but it doesn't really offer a whole lot as far as like story development. Yeah. So if you have in like one one type of environment, I think you could still have a couple of biodomes in it. For example, on this island, you could easily just put a mountain, and then once you go up to the top of the mountain, like it's where you get to Gan's castle, and you go higher up than that. It's uh, well, cold. Snowy. Yeah, snowy. Nothing says we can't have a volcanic volcano. Yeah, or a volcano. volcano. I think a vol you could have it be cold, and then like. It's a volcano. If you go into the volcano, it gets it turns into lava. So you have to go through the snow to get into the lava. That could work too. Mm. You could put caves in the mountains to go into it and stuff. Or there could be multiple mountains. It doesn't have to just be one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it doesn't have to just be one. You could have a series of islands too, kind of like Hawaii. Mm hmm. I was kind of thinking. Oh that. shit! Yeah. I was thinking I'd... that myself. I have a cluster of islands. Yeah. That, so that did not occur to me, honestly. And then, you know, you shape them all unique enough so people can recognize where stuff is. You don't make it so you constantly have to travel between, like, the farthest and the closest island. Because that's just irritating. Sure. So, you have a fun way to transport yourself. I think if I was going to base it off of an island design, though, I'd probably go something similar to, like, the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, as far as how I'd, con like, design it. So, like... There's an island here, an island here, an island here, and then in the middle is the ocean area you can explore with a few little islands in the middle, and the Master Sword is down there somewhere. That way you don't have to do a whole bunch of map out into the distance. And then, you know, one island, cold mountains, or has the cold mountain, one island has the volcano, and then one's just your tropical island with, like, a small mountain. Mm -hmm. I think if you did it like that, it would work pretty well. And then obviously the smaller islands in the middle. You could you could make sailing enjoyable. I right. mean, if you wanted to get really crazy, you could give Link the four sword, and at that point you can co-op the game. But yeah, I don't think we're gonna see a we'll co-op Zelda for a bit. Although they, if I remember correctly, they did release uh, one not too long ago that was three player co-op. Tri yeah, Triforce Heroes. Heroes. Yeah. If I, I recall I correctly, at some point in Breath of the Wild's definitely. development. I haven't played Triforce Heroes. I played the shit out of Four Swords. Unfortunately, it seemed like that game was more of a gimmicky, um, a parody game. Oh, uh, was it? Uh, yeah. I, I forgot it even came out, honestly. There was no Zelda. You were basically just this this young kid it's who a, was fashionable. It's a much more laid-back uh, story from what I've been told. Dyla is the princess in that game. Uh, well, Whatever. I played a lot of Four Sword, and I think that was neat. But yeah, I mean, that's that's just not going to happen, probably. It'd be cool if you could get the Four Sword, and then if you had it, you could co-op, but mm -hmm. I have a feeling they might be a little weird about it. Not anytime but soon, anyway. It would be it would be a neat... That That's like high-end wish in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we've kind of talked and compiled a decent sounding sequel you know hyrule castle gets attacked uh maybe something gets stolen maybe you decide to just be like we're not gonna just get attacked for no reason i kind of like the idea of the island getting attacked and the the phantom uh the malice phantom stealing the malice that was left in the castle he needs more to resurrect <sighs> himself hmm. and that's why he sh he showed up and attacked it so then yeah, you go to the island, you, you, go, you then you go to this island, you get attacked, you lose the Master Sword, 
You wake up on the island, you gotta deal with the natives of this island, the Dekus. The Deku scrubs. Well, each island itself could have its own. Yeah. You could do well, that. You could have it all one has Dekus, one has uh, refugees from the Calamity. I mean, yeah, you could. It, it really depends on how necessary you think it all is. I mean, obviously you're going to need a, a hub town. How long you want the game to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Volcano Island has some Gorons. You know, one has Dekus, one has Zorons. Burritos um, up in the mountain. I don't think there should be any Gerudo because it'd be too far from the desert. I mean, you could put as much as I would, in, just not a Gerudo town. Or just, like, have, or just have Gerudo pirates come back. Gerudo pirates. Oh, yeah, shit. I forgot they, they were a thing. And they just sail around and attack you when you're on the sea. Try to seal maybe, your shit. Maybe there's um, a bit where you have to fight a boss. Gerudo. You beat her up and then, and then, <laughs> she, then you get a... That could be how you get your ship. Well, since your ship gets destroyed, you literally got to beat up a bunch of Grudos, then you become their captain. It's possible. And then they um, use their boat to sail around and do stuff. One thing I'd like to That's see a if idea, it is... actually. One thing I'd like to see if it is a, an island-slash-water-based game is a new combat-fitting water. I think, uh, uh... Maybe new items. I'm not sure if yeah. you guys played Assassin's Creed. Uh, Creed Black Flag, or like even no. Kingdom Hearts had the the Pirates of the Caribbean area and the new one in Kingdom Hearts three, something mm -hmm. kind of like that where you have like a ship versus ship sort of combat system while you're driving the ship around. Yeah, you you just have to get it to fit. If it's fun, people will enjoy it, and that's really the key there. Is you'd have to make it fun. But yeah, anyway, you go there, you do these things. After you do that, you go into doing the the different dungeons around the islands. So you then you go around to these islands and you collect uh, your new Sheikah Slate powers or items. Mm -hmm. You build up your uh, I guess I guess it'd be almost like a little fort or a dock or a harbor or something mm -hmm. at some point so you you have that going on. Which is kind of what I was talking about earlier. You upgrade that as you play throughout the game. You can upgrade your ship as you play throughout the game. I guess you could have like map bosses too, which sort of like the they had Almost before. Like world bosses. Yeah, sort of like like with the Hinox and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I would probably not have the the Blood Moon exactly. I'd probably have them make a different cutscene. Like, instead of having the Blood Moon rise, put, like, a lighthouse or something on Ganon's tower, and they feed Malice into that, and that shines, and that's what respawns the enemies all over the map instead of the Blood Moon. So it's not happening all over the world, it's just happening around here. Yeah. Because if you could kill enemies permanently while part of me is like, that'd be good, part of me also says that would leave a lot of open map. Hmm. Yeah. So that's, that can explain how that's happening. So, like I said, after that, you go around, you fight temple bosses to get the keys to get into the castle. You fight a, so we'll say four temples to get the what you need to go into the castle. A bonus temple to go do if you want to get the Master Sword back. Mm -hmm. Ganon's castle. So right there, that'd be six temples. Mm -hmm. Which I think would be pretty okay i would i would personally like to see one or two more uh to make it a decently length game mm -hmm. i'm not entirely sure where you could fit them in or what you could have them do you could always just make i mean four is kind of an arbitrary number for whatever requirements you need you can make it however many you wanted mm -hmm. i mean there you could just do the same amount of temples they do in other games like uh ocarina of time had what six I think uh, Majora's Mask had four plus the moon. Twilight Wind Princess Waker, had like 13. Wind Waker only had two. Ocarina, I well, they had two things called temples, but there was a bunch of uh, like, basically temples. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's something too. Like, you don't actually have to call them temples. You can have them be whatever. Well, no, a temple just refers to the type of, a lengthy oh, dungeon. Uh, what we're just, the, another one could be the the great fairy thing they're talking about oh yeah well that kind of be like a side mini one well that'd yeah. be a temple you'd have to do in multiple parts basically 
Ocarina of Time had nine dungeons. Is that right? Yeah, because you also had the ones as a kid. I wasn't counting those. Yeah, so, you know, you go, you do all those. Then you go up to the tower, you fight the boss, you save the world. Bam. Mm -hmm. You get, you fight Fierce Deity at the end. If only, huh? Plot and twist to the end. Shadow Link puts on the Fierce Deity's mask. Becomes the, he becomes, uh... The, yeah, the Shadow Deity. Then you get the Fierce Deity mask and you fight him. Or I just like cream to just do pants. something with those two, I really don't think they would. Yeah, they're kind of standalone, different dimensional stuff. Yeah, um, but, you know, that's an overall pretty good how we would do a sequel mm -hmm. or a continuation based on your point of view, which I'm pretty sure those are almost exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, so I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, were our ideas good or bad? Do you have ideas you would like to share with us? Let us know your opinions or points of view in the comments below. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you stay to the end, uh, I appreciate it. And so do my co-host. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Although one thing I've always wanted to see um, in a Zelda game, speaking of Zelda, is having uh, Zelda play a more crucial role in game you know she's named after game franchise she's named after i have an idea for that but that's more of a unique idea more than a, a sequel which is what we're doing right now sure. yeah well we'll have a whole episode dedicated to that probably of ideas for a zelda game where zelda is more important